I'm Ivan Gruel, Co-Chief Investment Officer with Avantax. Today we'll provide a market update for April. We'll start with a recap of returns for March and then shift to a discussion on the Federal Reserve, economic growth, and the outlook for earnings in the months ahead. Stocks around the globe finished the month of March in positive territory, closing the door on the strongest first quarter since 2019. For the month, the S&P 500 was higher by more than 3%, while the Russell 2000 added more than 3.5% on the month. On the international front, the MCSI EFA index added 3.3% in total return, while emerging markets added about 2.2%. Year-to-date, the S&P 500 index still leads the way after a strong January, higher by more than 10% on the year. International developed and small cap stocks have been gaining ground over the past couple of months, and both indices are now higher by between 5 and 6% on the year. Emerging market stocks continue to lag, but are still in positive territory for the year, higher by about 2% in total return. The month of March welcomed some new leadership, as stocks in the energy, utilities, materials, and financial sectors led the way higher. After several months of underperformance, value stocks significantly outperformed growth stocks on the month. Shifting to bonds, interest rates were mostly unchanged during the month, translating into positive total returns for taxable bond investors. For the month, taxable bonds were higher by about 0.9% in total return, while municipal bonds were flat. For the year, taxable bonds are lower by about 0.8% in total return, while municipal bonds have outperformed, lower by about 0.4%. The most recent Fed policy setting meeting in March marked the fifth consecutive meeting at which the Fed opted to hold interest rates steady at the current target range of 55 to 5.5%. Notably, the Fed reaffirmed its expectation for three rate cuts by year end but stressed the need for further evidence that inflation is on its way down to 2%. With just six policy setting meetings remaining this year, the markets are currently expecting the Fed to begin cutting rates at the June meeting, followed by an additional cut in September and December. This would bring the federal fund's target range from its current target to four and a half to four and three quarters percent by year end. In addition to the most recent monetary policy announcement by the Fed, we also received a look at the latest summary of economic projections, which the central bank releases on a quarterly basis. These forecasts show an improving economic outlook as the Fed increased its 2024 real GDP growth projections from 1.4% at the beginning of the year to 2.1% today. In addition, they expect the unemployment rate to remain at or below 4% by year end. Separately, core inflation is expected to remain sticky in the near term, finishing the year around 2.6% before eventually drifting lower to the 2% target by the end of 2025 or early 2026. As we move into the second quarter of 2024, markets will begin shifting their focus to first quarter earnings, which will be well underway later this month. Over the past couple of years, U.S. earnings growth and corresponding returns have been largely concentrated in the Magnificent Seven stocks. As this next chart shows, analysts expect this trend to begin to shift later this year, with the rest of the market once again pulling their weight from an earnings standpoint. With valuations for the largest U.S. companies near the upper end of their historical ranges, we continue to stress the importance of diversification in client portfolios. So that's what we have for this month. Thank you for watching and have a great day.